Hello there and welcome back. In the previous episode we created our fake login page, so now when we open our app this is the first fragment that the user will see. And if this user is not us, he will not know what the password is, so we'll, he will try to enter the password or his own credentials, but it will not work, and then he will simply close the app or delete it. But if we open this app, we know the password, so we're going to be able to go to the maps fragment and see all the locations. Now, our app is almost done, right? It works, and there's a few more things that we need to do, but the main part is over. So in this episode, we're going to focus on two main things. We're going to focus on organizing our project into the MVVM design pattern, and we're going to add dependency injection. Usually, we add dependency injection after our project is already structured in some kind of design pattern, and most of the time, it's the MVVM one. So first of all, we're going to take care of that part, and after everything is done, we're going to add dependency injection, okay? So even if you don't know what MVVM is or dependency injection, I'm going to show you in this episode. It's not going to be some kind of in-depth tutorial, and I'm going to have other videos that are going to explain these things separately, so you can check them out, and I'm also going to link them in the description of this video but I'm still going to try to do my best to explain these things briefly so you can understand why we need them. So I'm going to drag a file into our drawables folder. Okay, so I added this app UML PNG and it's just some graph that I created that will show how our project will look like, okay? And this is the way it's going to look like after we make it into an MVVM design pattern project, okay? So in MVVM, we have three separate layers, okay? We have the view, we have the view model, and we have the model. So that's why it's called MVVM, okay? Model, view model, well, model, view, view model, okay? So the idea is that all of the different fragments and all of different classes are separated into three distinct layers. And each layer has its own responsibilities, okay? Because usually we separate code into different methods, right? Into different functions. And each function has its own responsibility. But then we also divide it into separate classes. So each class has a separate responsibility. But with the MVVM design pattern, we separate it even more. We separate different classes by layers, okay? So each layer will have a different responsibility, and this way we can organize our code and use it more efficiently, okay? So right now, if you notice, we have this login fragment and maps fragment. We didn't call them this way because we still kept the original name, but we can change them so we can go to first fragment, refactor, and we can call it login fragment. We're still going to have to change a lot of things like the XML files and other things inside the navigation, but it's just so we can be with this UML, okay? so map fragment. Well, actually, maps. So right now, we're still not following this design pattern, okay? We have some kind of basic design pattern, we have a main activity, and we have these two fragments. So we can see that we have this view part, okay? Of course, we have the UI, and the UI is just the part that the user sees. Then we have the main activity, and then we have both of these fragments that are under the responsibility of this main activity. Okay, so this entire part is the view, and this is what we have over here, okay? And in our case, we also have this model, right? We have our Firebase manager that is connected to the Firebase real-time database, okay? And we also have this Fuse location provider, but we are talking to them straight from the view, okay? Because if we go into our main activity, well, into our maps fragment, we can see that we have a reference to the Firebase manager inside the maps fragment. So 
it would look like an arrow is coming out of this maps fragment and going straight to the Firebase Manager. But it's not something that we want to do inside the MVVM design pattern. We want each layer to have its own responsibilities, so only the view model layer can talk with the model layer, okay? And then the view model gets this information, it does some logic, and then it brings this information to the view. We do not want the view layer to talk directly with the model, okay? So it can be Firebase Manager, it can be the Location Manager, it can be even some kind of local database, it can be some kind of API, right? All the different data sources. So all the different data sources are in this model layer. But we don't want the view layer to talk directly to the model. And for now, this is what happens, okay? We are talking directly to the model inside our fragments, inside our views. So that's not a good thing. This is more like MVC, okay? Model view controller, but it's not MVVM. So we're going to do a few changes to make it more like this chart, okay? And eventually our app will look like that. So if we go to our packages, we can see that this data package is some kind of model layer, right? We have this Firebase Manager inside. And the Firebase Manager talks to the Firebase Real-Time Database. We also have the Fuse Location Provider, but it's again inside of our fragments, right? We're talking, well, we actually talk with it inside the service. And the service is also some kind of component that is not actually a view, component, but it's also not a model, okay? It's something in between, okay? So the location service, it's like a fragment that has its own view model, so it does all the logic inside, but it's still not supposed to talk directly with the data. It's supposed to have some kind of mediator between. So everything will be clear when we start changing things, okay? So after we create these view models that will talk with the model layer, we're also going to create a repository. And a repository will simply talk with the different data sources. So if we have a Firebase manager and we have a location provider and then we have a local database or an API, all of these things will talk with the repository and then the repository will send this data to our UI. So the UI will never talk with these data sources, okay? This is the principle of the MVVM design pattern. So first of all, we're going to create this repository class, okay? And this repository class will be the one that will talk with all the data sources. So each time we're going to come back to this UML and we're going to see how much we progressed, okay? So we're going to create this repository. So inside the data package, we're going to create a new class a new Kotlin file, and we're going to call it repository, repository, okay? And inside this repository, we simply want to talk with the Firebase Manager, okay? So we're going to add a few different methods that will basically just mediate between the Firebase Manager and the view model, okay? So each thing we can do inside the Firebase Manager, we also want to do it inside the repository. So for example, we have these update data, read to map, and add new device. So these are the three things that we do inside the Firebase Manager, and we want to do them inside the repository as well, because this layer will simply use these methods to call these methods, okay? So first of all, we have fun add device to Firebase, okay? Then we have this fun update data to Firebase. And fun read data from Firebase. Now, the only thing that these methods will do is actually just call these methods, okay? 
So over here, we need to add this Firebase Manager reference into the repository, right? The same way we created a reference over here, we don't want to call it from the fragment anymore, but we want to call it from the repository. So we're going to do this inside the constructor, okay? So private val Firebase Manager, and we're going to also initialize it, Firebase Manager. So now we simply created a reference to the Firebase Manager inside the repository itself. And now we can reference it over here, Firebase Manager add new device. So this is the method inside the Firebase Manager. And we need to pass in a user. So we also need to receive a user. Well, it's actually a device. We need to change it, right? We changed it to device, device. Then update data, we need to call the Firebase Manager, call this update data, and inside we need to pass a user ID, a property, and a new value. So user ID, property, property to update, and a new value. And of course, we still don't have these parameters. So we're simply going to copy them over here. So the user ID is a string. And of course, we can do it very simply. We can go to the Firebase Manager and just copy all of the signature, okay? Because these are the same parameters. Okay, so now when we call this method from the repository, it will also require these parameters and then it will send it to the Firebase Manager. So it's basically some kind of duplicate of methods. We have this method calling this exact method, but inside the Firebase Manager. But the good thing is that it starts inside this repository and we don't need to talk with the Firebase Manager directly, right? Remember, we have this supply manager in the restaurant and he is the one that is talking to the different suppliers. Okay, so the cook can talk with this supply manager and then the supply manager will talk with these suppliers, okay? So this is what we do here. And then Firebase Manager, read data to map and we need to pass in a map. So over here, map, Google map, okay? So now we have this repository. So now we can also go to our maps fragment, right? The second fragment. And over here, we can create a reference to this repository. And yes, I know the fragment is not supposed to talk with the repository. There is still this view model that we need to create. But for now, let's just make this repository inside the fragment. So maps fragment. And over here, we're going to create a reference. we have access to this repository, so we don't need this Firebase Manager reference anymore, okay? Because we don't want to talk with the Firebase Manager directly from the fragment, okay? So we're going to comment this out, and we're also going to comment this out, and the place that we're actually using the Firebase Manager is here inside the onmap ready. So over here, we're simply going to remove this Firebase Manager, and we're going to reference the repository, okay? And then inside the repository, we have this method, read data from Firebase, and we need to pass in the Google map. So then it will call this method inside the repository, and inside the repository, it will simply call it from the Firebase manager, okay? So there's some kind of hierarchy. From the maps fragment, we talk with the repository, and then the repository is talking with the Firebase Manager. And we're going to do the same thing with the location service, okay? So we don't have the location service over here in this uh, UML, but think about it as some kind of other fragment, okay? Of course, it's not a fragment, it's not something visible, okay? A service is something that is running in the background, but we can refer to it as some kind of fragment, okay? So then inside the location service, 
we are going to comment out the Firebase Manager and the reference over here, and we're going to create var repository Okay, so now we have a reference to the repository and over here when we use it let's see over here we use it from the firebase manager so we can simply rename it to repository and then we need to add device to firebase and repository update data to firebase okay so these are the changes, and now we're simply talking with the repository, and then the repository will talk with Firebase, okay? And that's also a good thing, because if we had more than one data source, we had, well, we have more than one, we have this location service, but if we had more databases, they would all talk with the repository, right? And we don't have to create references for all of these databases inside our service right? We don't want to have some kind of list of different references over here, database one, database two, database three. No, we only want one reference of the repository, and then the repository will contain the different links to the different data sources, okay? So this is the idea of NVVM. Now we're going to also create the view models, right? So we're going to divide this UI package into smaller packages. So we're going to create a new package and we're going to call it map. And then we're also going to create a login and we're going to select this login fragment and we're going to drag it inside the login, refactor and maps into the map. And then in each one of them, we're going to create these view models, okay? So we're going to click here and create a new simple file and we're going to call it login view model. And over here, where is it? Maps view model, okay? So now we have both of these login view model and maps view model and we can see them over here, okay? So right now they're just simple classes that are not actually view models. And the way to make them into view models is by extending the view model class, okay? So we're going to do the same thing over here. it will simply extend this view model class. So now we also want to make this connection between the fragments and the view models, right? We want to make this arrow. So inside the login fragment, we're going to go over here inside the onCreate view somewhere next to this binding, okay? And we're going to just make a little comment, view model, okay? And over here, we're going to say var login view model. And the way to initialize the view model is simply view model provider. This is the context. And login view model. This is the name of the class of the view model, okay? So now we have a reference to this login view model, okay? And the way it's connected is because we passed in this class, okay? This login view model class that we created over here. And we're going to do the same thing inside the maps fragment. Somewhere here. But we're going to rename it to maps view model and we're going to pass in the maps view model class, okay? So now we have these references. And now we can move this repository to talk to the view models instead of the fragments, okay? So inside, let's just close a bit of these tabs. So inside the login fragment, we're going to 
where's the repository? Well, we did not create a repository over here, but maps fragment, we're going to take the repository, we're going to cut it, and we're going to paste it into the maps view model, okay? Because we want the view model to talk to the repository, and then the fragment will talk with the view model, okay? So we don't want the reference to the repository inside the fragment. So we have the reference over here, and then we can simply talk with the view model and then talk with the repository through this view model, okay? So to do that, we need to go over here and we want to call the view model. But in order to call the view model from a different method, we need to make it as a variable that is a part of this class and not only a part of this on create view. So we're going to delete this var, we're going to copy this over here beyond this on create, okay? So every part of our class can access it. Latent it var, because we are not going to initialize it at the beginning. Maps view model, and it's just a maps view model. So now we declare it over here, then it's going to get initialized over here, but then we can also call it from here. So now instead of talking with the repository, we can talk with the view model, right? Maps view model, but we also need to create another method inside the view model that will talk with the repository, right? So we're going to call it populate map, and it doesn't have to be the same name, right? We can call it differently inside the view model and then call it differently inside the repository. So populate map, it will receive a Google map and it will simply call the repository read data from database, okay? And we're going to pass in this Google map. So now we're going to reference this method from the fragment itself and we're going to pass in the Google map, okay? So I hope you're following along. Now we have this pattern, okay? The fragment, the maps fragment is talking with the view model and the view model is talking with the repository. And then the repository is talking with the Firebase manager. So this is exactly what we wanted to happen, right? We have the maps fragment that is talking to the view model and it's calling this method. Then inside the view model, the view model is talking with the repository and we're calling this method. And then the repository is talking with the Firebase manager. And then the Firebase manager is doing its own magic, okay? So you may be wondering, why do we need all of these different methods because they do the same thing. They just call a different method that calls the same method again and again. It seems like a waste, but that's not true because now it's separated into different layers. So if we have another manager or another data source, we can call it from the repository. And then if we have something else that we want to do in the view model, we can do it inside the view model instead of fragment. So this way, everything is really separated into different jobs, right? The view does things that are related to the UI. The view model is simply doing logic that is related to the view, right? It sends information to the view and it gets information from the data model. And then the model contains the different suppliers, right? The different data suppliers, let's call them. And the repository is the one that is talking to all of them. So if we had more different data sources in the future, everything will get organized inside this repository. And then we can simply talk to the repository. And then if we had maybe another repository and in bigger apps, we can definitely have more than one repository. Then both of these repositories could talk with the view model and then the fragment doesn't need to go and 
create references to different repositories, it can simply talk to the view model and the view model will talk to these repositories. So if you understand this pattern, this hierarchy, right? The waiters talk with the cooks and the cooks talk with the supply manager and the supply manager talks with the suppliers. If you understand this, then you understand MVVM. And it's basically always the same. You create the fragments, you create view models for these fragments, and then you create some kind of repository that is talking to the different data sources. And each project will have different data sources, right? Some projects will have an API, other ones will have a local database like room database, or maybe remote databases like Firebase, okay? So each app, each project will have different data sources, but this structure will always be the same. So if you, are wondering why our location service is not talking to some kind of view model and then talks to the repository, why the service is talking directly to the repository. Because as I told you, a service is not really a fragment. So it's not inside this view category. And a service basically has its own view model built in inside, okay? So we can definitely talk to the repository from the service, okay? Now, you may be wondering why we're still keeping this fuse location over here, right? Because over here, it's going to be talking to this repository, right? So it's something that we're going to deal with when we add dependency injection, and we're going to see how dependency injection will help us to do it, right? I mean, we can still do it right now. We can take this fuse location service and move it to the repository, okay, over here, but we're going to do it more efficiently with dependency injection. So we're done with the MVVM part and our project is right now following the MVVM design pattern because this is the way it looks, okay? We have the view layer with the fragments then these fragments are talking only with these view models and the view models are talking with the repository and then the repository talks with the Firebase manager. So we're definitely following the MVVM design pattern, okay? Bigger apps, bigger projects will look more complicated. They will have more arrows, more different things, but they will still all be inside these three different layers, okay? So before we start to add dependency injection, I want to just explain to you what it is so you can follow along and not just guess, okay? Again, it's not going to be some kind of in-depth tutorial, but just the logic behind it. Dependency injection is just a way to add different dependencies into our app so we don't have to create these references manually each time. And when I say dependency injection, the dependency is not related to these dependencies over here, okay? These are library dependencies, but it has nothing to do with dependency injection. A dependency is, if we go to our repository, for example, this Firebase manager reference is a dependency, okay? Because this repository is dependent on this Firebase manager in order to work, okay? And then if we go to the UI view model, this repository is also a dependency because the view model is dependent on it to work. So all of these things that we instantiate inside the different fragments or the different classes. And these are things that we need to make the code work. They are called dependencies, okay? So with dependency injection, we can basically initialize them in one place, okay? And then we can just inject them anywhere inside our code. So instead of creating a repository over here, we can inject it inside the view model, and then we don't need to create a reference, okay? And you're going to see how it looks, and in bigger projects, it just makes everything much more simpler because then you don't need to have 
a ton of different references and everything is just in chaos, okay? Everything is just going to be injected automatically into your classes. So even if you don't understand right now, it's okay. When we add these things, you're going to see how they work and then maybe you're going to understand it a little bit better. So first of all, to be able to use dependency injection, we need to add a few library dependencies into our project, okay? So the dependency injection will be performed with the dagger hilt library, okay? There are different libraries that do dependency injection, but hilt is very popular for Android, okay? So first of all, inside our module Gradle, we're going to go into the plugins over here and we're going to add two different plugins. Of course, I'm going to link everything in the description of the video. So we have these two plugins. We have the Dagger Hilt plugin and the Kotlin Capt, and it's just something that will help us with the annotations inside Hilt. Then we're going to scroll down and over here, we're going to add the actual dependencies for Hilt. So let's just take this off. So again, we have this hill dependency, we have this hilt cap dependency, and we have the version. So we can do it this way. We can just create some kind of variable that will hold the version. And then we're going to place this variable over here, or we can just take the version and place it over here like any other dependency. It's just a different way to work, okay? You can do it like that, okay? But usually both of these dependencies come together and they always have the same version. So if the version will change over here, it will also change over here. So instead of changing it over here and then over here, we can simply create it in one place, okay? But that's just something that is useful to know. Then we're going to go into our project Gradle and over here in the build script, we're going to add this class path, okay? So again, you can find everything in the description section of this video. And now we're going to sync now, okay? We need to download these plugins and libraries. So now that everything is downloaded, we can go and see if our project is actually getting these Hilt components. So to do that, we can simply go to our main activity and over here, we can do this at sign Android entry point and tree point. Then you can see that it actually recognizes this Hilt library, and then we can Alt Control and it will import it over here. So we know that these libraries are recognized by our project, okay? But let's delete this because we still are not dealing with the main activity. So first of all, we're going to add something inside this application package that we created a few episodes ago. So we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it app, okay? And this is a class that is usually created inside bigger projects. We can do all kinds of configurations inside that will apply to the entire app. So to make Hilt work inside our project, first of all, we need to go above this class and annotate it with Hilt Android app, okay? And then we simply press Alt-Enter and it will import this annotation. Of course, we need to make this class into an application. So we're going to extend the application class. And also to make this application class the application class of our app, we need to go into the manifest and over here at the beginning of the application tag, we're going to add the name and it will suggest this application app. And this is exactly the application app class that we created, okay? So now 
the entire project will know that this is the app class, okay? Now, the next thing is inside of this DI package, okay? This is the package that we created for all of the dependency injection modules. We're going to create a new file and we're going to call it network module. We're not going to use it that much inside this project simply because we don't have a lot of different dependencies that we need it for, okay? And I'm going to explain to you which dependencies we create inside this module, okay? So first of all, let's make it into a module, module, and also And we're going to import this and import this. And this is just a way to tell the project that this module is going to be inside the singleton component. And what it means, it means that it can be accessible from this entire project, okay? Because a singleton is just an instance that is created once, so we don't need to guess where it is and we can always reference it directly by just calling because it's inside the singleton component, okay? But don't worry about that, it's not that important, just you need to know that it means that we can access this module from the entire project. And of course, we want to make this module into an object because it's going to be some kind of static module that we can access later. Now, the only method that we're going to create inside for now, it's going to be a method that will provide the Firebase Manager. As I told you, with dependency injection, we want to inject these different dependencies into the different classes of our app. So we need one spot to actually initialize the dependency, okay? So before we initialized the Firebase Manager directly inside the fragment, then we changed it to be initialized inside the repository. But we don't want to initialize it locally in all of these places, okay? And that's the point of dependency injection. We want to initialize it in only one place and then send it to all the places that it is needed, okay? So inside the network module, we're going to create a method called provide Firebase Manager. And it's going to return a Firebase Manager, right? And the thing that we return is simply the Firebase Manager that we initialized. So over here, we initialize the Firebase Manager, we create an instance of it, and then we return it. So now that we created this method, we're going to annotate it with provides, okay? Because we want to provide this Firebase Manager to our entire app. And now we're going to be able to inject it anywhere inside our app, okay? So before we inject it, we also want to add a few more annotations to our project. And these are standard things that you need to do each time you add Hilt into your project. So you create this app, okay? You extend this application and you annotate it with Hilt Android app. Then you need to go to all of your fragments. So it means the main activity, which is not a fragment, but it also needs to be over here. And you annotate it with Android entry point, okay? And you import it. And then you just copy this and you add it to all of the different fragments, maps fragment and login fragment. And if you had more fragments or activities, you also need to add it to them. And another annotation that we need to add is for the view models. So each view model that you're going to have inside your project, you need to add this Hilt view model. So you simply tell Hilt what are all the different components in your app, okay? You tell Hilt, okay, this is my app, these are my view models and these are my activities or fragments, okay? It's just a way to map your entire project so Hilt will know how to work. Now, if you added this Hilt view model 
annotation, it means that you're going to use dependency injection inside this class. So you have to inject something into the constructor, okay? Otherwise, it will give you an error even if you don't want to use this view model. If you don't want to use this view model for dependency injection, simply don't add this view model annotation, okay? So inside the login view model, we're not going to do anything special. So we don't need this annotation, okay? But inside the maps view model, we're going to use dependency injection. So we're going to add this annotation and then we're also required to inject into our constructor, okay? Inject constructor. And we're going to import it. So we simply say that we can now inject things into this view model. And only when we have this over here, this will work and it will recognize it as a view model. So even if you're not going to inject anything inside the view model, we still need to add this. Otherwise it will just crash or simply not use it at all like we did over here. But we're going to use it and we're going to inject this repository inside the view model, right? We don't want to create a reference to the repository over here and then create a reference inside the service like we did here, right? We don't want to initialize it every time. We want to initialize it in one place and then just inject it anywhere we want. So now we're going to start injecting the different dependencies into our different classes. So inside the repository, okay, we create this Firebase Manager instance. And that's fine because we're going to use it over here. But we're also initializing it inside the repository. So that's something we don't want to do in dependency injection because we already initialized it inside the network module. And we're simply going to send it from here to the repository. We're going to inject it inside the repository. So to inject something inside a class, we need to use this inject constructor, okay? So we're simply injecting something inside the constructor. And now we don't need to initialize the Firebase Manager at all, okay? Because it's going to inject the Firebase Manager into the constructor. And we don't need to initialize it anymore because it's initialized over here. And now this little icon appears over here. And if we hover over it, it says provides for repository. So this method provide Firebase Manager provides for repository. So because we annotated it with provides, this method will provide this instance to our entire app, okay? So each place that is going to reference the Firebase Manager, this method is going to send it a reference. So over here we see provides for repository. We can also click on it and it will take us over here. And over here we have another icon that says Firebase Manager consumes provide Firebase Manager. It means that this instance over here is actually consuming this instance, okay? So they are both connected. And now we injected the Firebase Manager into this repository and we can use it as we did before. The difference is that we don't need to initialize it anymore because it's initialized over here. So think about it in bigger apps, it can really help us a lot. Now I also want to move it over here because that looks better, okay? Now we also want to inject this repository into our view models. Well, actually into our maps view model because right now we create this instance over here and it also requires us to create a Firebase Manager, so we don't want to create an instance over here. As we said, with dependency injection, we want to inject the dependency into this class. So we want to inject the repository over here. But in order to inject the repository, we don't need to do anything special. We just need to say inject. 
So this inject constructor, it can be confusing a little bit in the beginning. If we add this inject constructor over here, it means that, first of all, we inject things inside the constructor of this repository, but it also means that we can inject this entire repository, okay? So we're going to inject this repository anywhere inside our app because we say inject. So now we can go into the view model, delete this, and simply inject late init repository. And this time we don't need to initialize it. We simply create this late init variable, and late init means that it's going to be initialized when we actually run the app and inject it. So we don't need to initialize it over here in the code. So now, again, we see this icon, repository consumes repository, okay? So now this will send an instance over here, okay? And now we can use it as we did before. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy this and we're going to go inside our location service. And instead of creating this instance over here, we're simply going to inject it into the location service as well, okay? And we can still use it. And we can see this icon again, repository consumes repository, okay? And we can also get rid of all of these things that we commented out. Now, you may be wondering why do we need this network module, right? Why not just go to our Firebase manager and add this inject over here and then inject it into anywhere it's, it is needed, right? And actually we can do it. We can go here and say inject constructor and it's going to inject the Firebase manager into this repository. So all of this is not required. We can comment this out. And if we go over here, it will still say consumes Firebase Manager. And if we go to the Firebase Manager, it will say provides for repository. So now we simply inject this Firebase Manager into the repository. So why do we need this network module? you need to understand that there's a difference between the different classes. A class like Firebase Manager is a class that we created. So we have access to the constructor and we can add this inject annotation and it means that we can inject it anywhere we want. But other times we don't have access to the constructor of the class, right? Sometimes we need classes that are not a part of our project, especially classes that we get using these dependency implementations, right? So a good example is this Fuse Location Provider. We're getting it from the Google services, okay? And then inside the location service, we create an instance out of it but we don't have access to the constructor of this class, right? So these kinds of classes, we need to initialize inside these modules, okay? So over here, we're going to remove these comments and we're going to change this to provide fused location, okay? And this time we're going to return a fused location provider client. So we're going to provide this class and the only place we're going to use it is inside the location service. And then we also need to initialize it. So we're going to copy all of this and we're going to return it over here, right? And we also need a context, but we don't have a context inside of this module, right? Because we don't have an activity or a fragment over here. So in order to get the context, we're going to inject a context inside this method. 
And that's one of the most useful things inside dependency injection, that if some kind of class needs a context to be initialized, we can also inject the context into the class, okay? Because inside the service, we created this instance and we initialized it and we had to provide the context. But right now, we're going to provide the context inside the module. So a way to inject the context is go over here inside the constructor and just add this application, cation, context, okay? And import it, and we're going to call it app context of type context, okay? And now we injected the context of our application inside this method, and now we can also use it as the context for this instance. Okay, and then we can see app context consumes provide context. Okay, so it simply consumes this application context. But now we also want to consume this entire method, right? So inside our location service, instead of initializing it over here and instead of declaring it over here, we're simply going to inject it inside the service. Inject, latent it, var, fuse location. And now we can see this icon again, consumes provide fuse location. So now this module is initializing this instance, it gets the context and it provides this entire fuse location instance to our location service. Okay, so now we can get rid of this and we can get rid of this. And notice that we no longer initialize anything inside our service. We're not initializing the repository. We're not initializing the fuse location client. And that's the point of dependency injection, okay? We simply inject these references these instances into the fragment or the service, but we initialize it only once. So we can inject it in a different place, right? We can inject it over here and then we can also inject it in a fragment if we want to, okay? And in big apps, it's very useful because we usually want to inject it in several places. So inside the network module, we can see that it consumes what it provides the location service, but it also consumes this context, okay? And that's very useful. So if you click on this, it will take us over here because this is the place that is consuming. And if we had more than one location, for example, if we are going to inject the fuse location inside the view model, if we had some kind of use for it over here, okay? then we could go over here and press on this and it will show us both of the locations that it is consumed. Okay, so the location service and the maps view model. But of course, we don't need to do anything with it over here in this app, right? In different apps, maybe you want to use it in the view model as well. So now if we go back to our let's see, drawable UML, we can see that the MVVM design pattern goes hand by hand with dependency injection because we have the different dependencies, right? The Firebase manager and the location provider and the repository is also some kind of dependency. And now instead of creating these different dependencies inside the view model or the fragments, we're simply going to inject them. So we inject the Firebase manager inside the repository. We inject the fuse location provider inside the repository. Well, actually inside the service. And then we simply talk with the repository. So all of this is reflecting the way our app looks like. And we also have dependency injection. So if we go to our repository, 
we are injecting Firebase inside the repository, we can talk with Firebase, and we also can inject the repository because we said inject, so now we inject the repository over here, and then we can talk with the repository, and then we can also talk with the view model, and the view model we don't need to inject it inside the fragment because each view model will talk with its own fragment, so we can simply do this, right? Just create a reference this way. And we can get rid of all of these things that we commented out. And I don't know why we did this, but we can clearly see that we're not using it, so we can delete this. And let's see that everything is in order. Again, we're not using the view model, although if you want to do all kinds of things inside the login page, you want to add things, you may want to do them inside the view model, okay? So if you're wondering what is the code that we actually write inside the fragment and what is the code that we write inside the view model, well, it's simple. Any code that has to do with the different views, okay? For example, over here, we create this set on click listener and we do this view binding and we find this login button. These are things that will only work inside the fragment because if we want to do this inside the view model, it's not going to work, right? It's not going to find this binding, right? Because this binding, is something that we created inside the fragment and it can only work inside the fragment. So if we want to change something in our view, if we want to create an alert dialog that requires a context, right? If we want to do things that are related to the actual UI, we need to write the code inside the fragment. But any other code that is not directly related to the view, we can write it inside the view model, okay? And it's better to write the code inside the view model because we don't want to make this fragment very long. We only want to put code here that is directly talking to the different views. And over here, we're going to do all of this logic that is talking to the model layer, right? It also talks with the actual fragment and it also talks with the actual model layer. So the view model is some kind of mediator. It gets information from the repository and it sends it to the fragment. Or the other way around, it gets information from the fragment and it sends it to the repository. So this is the idea. And of course you need to build more apps to actually practice it and understand what kind of logic you place here and what kind of logic you place in the fragment. So it, these are things that will simply come with practice, but this is the idea. And again, it's very recommended to create some kind of diagram each time you create a project, even a small project, because then you can actually see everything in front of your eyes and understand how things are flowing, right? We have some kind of flow. We have the UI, we have the fragments, they talk to the view model, to the repository, and the repository talks to Firebase Manager. So we're almost done with the series, okay? The last thing we need to do is to actually deploy our app and install it on the target device. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you how we actually build this project into an APK file. So the APK file will be a file that we can copy to the different devices, and then we can simply click on it and it will install the app in the device. Of course, you can always just bring the device to your PC and then use it like you use your own device to test the app, and then you can just run it and it will install the app on the target device. But in that case, you also need to open the developer options in the device 
And of course, if it's a device that belongs to a different person, it's not something that is going to take two seconds, right? You need to connect it to your PC. So it's not recommended to do it this way, but we're going to talk about it in the next episode. I'm going to show you different options that you can use to install this app on a target device. And we also need to change the name of the app to Facebook, right? Otherwise, the person will simply see secret app in his app. So he will probably delete it, right? So we need to make the app look like Facebook, right? So we need to also change the name to Facebook. We also need to change the icon to Facebook, right? Because right now we're using this launcher icon. So all of this will happen in the next episode. And then we're going to be able to actually use our app the way it was intended. So thank you for watching. Please leave a like if this video was helpful and you can also subscribe. It will help you get notified when the next episode will come out. Of course, it will support me a lot. So see you next time.